Dodgers have made it to the postseason. Will they make it to the freeway series? Time will tell. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo, and yes, it is time for postseason baseball for the Angels and the Dodgers. Also coming up a little later in the show, it's almost basketball season. That's right, the Lakers and Clippers are in training camp. And it was an exciting finish to the IndyCar season, and we're going to catch up with both drivers who are in contention. But first off, it was champagne flowing for the Angels and the Dodgers, and you might want to get your goggles out for this one. Pretty fun. This is what it's all about. It's just a start, but this is what it's all about. Well, you, you keep working hard, you put things together, it's, it's a blessing, it's, it's very special. What was it like when you were watching the game after your game was over tonight? Oh gosh, I mean, just like we are now, we erupted when Texas tied it and then came back and won. I mean, that was, it, it was phenomenal. I'm having a blast. Everything, I love everything. This is, this is what we play for right here. Get the division and then the World Series. Unreal. We are in the Dodgers locker room and you guys have just clinched the division. How are you feeling right now? I feel great. This is an unbelievable feeling. Uh, this is the reason I came over here was for celebrations like this, to, to play on such an awesome team with these guys. It's been an unbelievable year. It feels great to do that here, man. We're excited, man. So much more to you after last year, man. Yeah, man, this is this is this is exciting, man. Last year I was a little banged up, but uh, you know I'm enjoying this, man. This is exciting. <laughs> I'm just thank God for the opportunity. I'm just so thankful and I'm glad I could be part of it. Um, it's a thing where uh, it gets sweeter each time. You, you realize the, you know, the opportunities uh, is always there to make it, but how many times do you actually get to do it? Um, not many. You look around the league and you hear the stories over the years of how many guys played a long time in their career and never got a chance to play in the playoffs. And uh, you know, for me and a couple guys, this is our fifth time here. Uh, you know, being a part of the same organization to be in the playoffs, and that's a pretty neat thing to be a part of. But uh, you know, we're missing one thing, which is bringing that World Series. Tell you what, it feels good. It feels good to do it at home um, in front of the, the fans that supported us all year. It feels really good. <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty special. I mean, last year was my first taste of uh, you know clinching the division, and um, you know this year still is fun. So you know we're looking forward to the playoffs, and uh, you know this is the start. Especially being in front of your home crowd, especially playing your rival and being in the Giants to feel great. How are our Cowboys going to do this year? Uh, I don't know. I had a good comeback last week, so. I, I got, I'm a little optimistic, but not, not you know, maybe 9-7 and seven at best. Yeah, we'll see how it goes, though. They could, they could sneak into the playoffs. Yeah, 9-7.
Thank you. This is this is so amazing tonight. Oh, I knew this was gonna happen. Woo! Okay. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's good. And, and, well, they say that beer and champagne are good for your hair, right? I certainly hope so. And we'll keep you posted on all of the celebrating that goes on for the Angels and Dodgers through the postseason. Now, it was an exciting finish to the IndyCar season this year. It came down to two teammates in Penske drivers, Elio Castro Nevis and Will Power. I sat down with both the teammates in Sonoma who talked about what it was like to compete against each other. Elio, we saw you out there just in practice. The intensity has turned up a little bit. You were kind of hovering around 10 and you jumped right to one. What, what were you thinking about that out there? Well, right now we, um it's 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 a hard work, especially when you have everything in one day, uh, right. to practice and then qualifying. Yep. You gotta be in a rush. Plus, we have autograph session and uh, things becoming escalating in, in a way that you're like, ah, man, this is a you gotta focus. And um, so far, the test that we had here a week and a half ago has been has been working really well, and um, uh, we're looking forward to qualifying. What did you find a week and a half ago that's maybe gonna help you for ultimately tomorrow and when you qualify today? Well, when you have a whole day, it's different than two practice of yeah. 45 minutes. Right. So when you have a whole day, lots of sets of tires to try bits uh, that it can change and you understand what's going to do, it helps a lot. So we came here with the car very much in, in great shape. Now it's just about the weather, you know, when the wind change, the, the temperature rise, all these little details that you got to worry mo most of it. But um, right now... Um, we, uh, we continue working very hard. Two more races here and then of course in Fontana. You have been so successful for so long. How have you done it? <laughs> I guess uh, when you love what you do, uh, you gotta keep going. And um, I'm pursuing obviously this uh, championship. Yes. And I wanna win four. I wanna tie my record with Rick Mears as well. I mean, he's still here. Give me a great tips and uh, uh, certainly uh, the team has been awesome. and. Um, when the marriage is working, <laughs> sky's the limit. It's a good deal, it's right? A good deal. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, you're not you're, you're not vying for a championship with just anyone. It, it's your Penske teammate. I mean, how crazy is that? Well, there is two things. Um, the the good news is um, the progress that we did. It's been fantastic. It's showing actually out there, and and the team being very su successful in some of the, the last two races. So it's great. Yep. The bad news is. <laughs> it's my teammate, darn it. He, he, he also there. So, uh, but it's great. Uh, it's a good problem to have for any team right. because, um, as I said, it. No matter what, hopefully in the end of the day, we're gonna we'll do everything we can to bring Roger Penske his championship. There's no secrets because all of you, you know, you're together all the time. You, everybody knows what they're doing. So, is it just what's going on when you're in the car alone that's going to make the difference? Yeah, between drivers and engineers. The engineer also know what the driver preference right. and some of the tools that maybe he knows it's going to help here or there. So uh, it's a combination of a lot of things. And um, but yes, normally the basic setups very very similar were wide open. And actually, we we even talk to each other like, how's your car? How's your mind? So like I said, one day is my day, other day is his day. Hopefully we have my day now. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely this is going to be, I, I think, the b most exciting two weeks that we've ever seen in IndyCar racing. I can't even remember a finish like this. Yeah, it was uh, super excited uh, so far. Last year, between uh, Scott Dixon and I, it was different teams, and they ended up getting. But uh, now, with 100 points in the line, especially the last race of the season, it's not only between uh, me and, and Will. I mean, looks good, but... Right. There's other people in there, there is mathematical chance, a lot, of, a good mathematical chance, a lot of other people. So that's why we want to make sure that we secure this uh, as soon as possible. Well, including Juan Pablo, who just happens yeah. to be the third teammate. It's exactly. <laughs> I mean, uh, and he's the he's the uh, the most uh, 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 different one, special <laughs> coming from a team which our competitor, yeah. and uh, obviously he's been a great asset to uh, to the team and for us too. He, uh, the information that he brought was incredible. And not only information, but he, he's a headache too. So uh, in a good way, uh, when I played that, because we knew that signing with Team Penske would be competitive from, from the get-go, and uh, he's showing them. Well, no slowing down for Elio Castro-Nevis. He'll qualify later, but right now he's the fastest guy in practice. We'll see if we can keep it going here and in Fontana, Elio. Thank, Thank you.
All right, we are here with Will Power. We just talked to your teammate. This has got to be the most exciting two last races of a season that we've ever seen, and you're vying for a championship against Elio. Yeah, it is. Um, it's uh, two tracks I really enjoy, and, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough fight, but uh, I'm up for it. It's a track that you're very good at, though, here, especially in Sonoma. What is it about this track for you? Yeah, everyone asks that. Um, definitely in the last couple of years, we haven't been quite as competitive. Um, uh, so, you know, we've got to really uh, step it up a little bit here in qualifying. Um, but but uh, it's just a place I enjoy. Um, you know, it's uh, very technical. It's really difficult to get a lap right. And, but, uh, yeah, it's a real driver's track. Thinking about this last couple of races in the championship, what's been going through your mind? I, I know in Long Beach when we talked, you said, you know what, I just kind of took a deep breath and let go of everything and didn't yeah. didn't maybe strangle it so hard. Have you kind of just stayed with that philosophy? Yes, I'm trying to keep calm and um, get the most out of the car. It's, you know, it's a tough, tough championship. It is hard to win and you know, I really want to do it. Are you enjoying any of this or is it so stressful? <laughs> Enjoy it when I, I, ask. I enjoy it when I win. Yeah. Now, right now we weren't strong enough in practice to be uh, enjoying things, so got to really uh, focus uh, for qualifying coming up here. Well, it's tough. It's a tough setup as well. Whenever you're only here for two days, and you've got to sort of cram everything in. It is, yeah. It's a very short, short uh, weekend. To, to go off topic just for a second, did you enjoy the dual races, the two races one day after another this season? I did. I loved it. I think it's a great idea. It's um, you're there to race and. And, you know, why not use up the two days racing? Right. Well, we're not going to even ask you what you're going to do in the off season. We're going to wait until after next weekend. But I hope that, that you all enjoy the next couple of races. And uh, best of luck to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. And a big congrats to Will Power, who won the championship. You definitely earned it. And we're going to have many more IndyCar stories coming up on Playing the Field in the off season. So look out for those. And finally, yes, it's almost basketball season. We caught up with the Lakers and the Clippers at Media Day, and these teams are ready to get back on the court. Well, new season, a few new players on your team. How excited are you to get back out there? I'm really excited. It's, uh, it's going to be a different year, of course, with Kobe being back, but we got a lot of new faces, a lot of young guys, and also a lot of veteran leadership, so it'll be fun for us. You had a chance to kind of talk to everybody and get to know them a little bit? or? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we've we had time now that everybody's been here for about a week or a little bit more. Some of us have been here for a while, but uh, we get to converse with each other all the time, and we have fun. What do you do in the, in the, in the summertime to kind of recharge the batteries? Uh, you just got to cool your jets down. I, you gotta, you gotta work out, but you also have to have your mind on. You gotta be ready for training camp. You gotta be ready for a year. It's gonna be a long year as it is. So, and we wanted to go the distance. So you gotta, you gotta be able to chill out in the summer and and let your body rest. You have a few new players on your team this year. Have you had a chance to kind of sit down with everyone yet? Yeah, you know, we've, we've spent some time in the gym, especially, and then in the locker room. Um, it, it's exciting. You know, our rookies are, are really talented, both of them. And, um, you know, it, it's been it's been fun the last few weeks to get in the gym with them, uh, as well as Jeremy Lin and, and, and really everybody. It's, it's, it's fresh. It's new. And um, we're all really excited. Not to be the very newest guy on the team. <laughs> a little bit of a different feeling. Um, you know, I was in a very different situation last year, um, being hurt and then trying to find my way on the team. Um, but you know, I, I'm still approaching it the same way and, and, and every day coming to prove to everybody that I belong. What do you do to kind of recharge your batteries in the off season? Um, well, got married. Uh, that's that, that was my recharge, I guess. Yeah, I got married when I'm, thank you, when I'm on my honeymoon. So uh, that was kind of my couple weeks of relaxation. 
anything specific you worked on your game? I know you were working through an injury, so. Yeah, I, I just wanted to get more athletic, get stronger, um, a little bit faster. And then you know, I thought the big thing is if the more and more I could become a knockdown shooter, from, especially from three-point range, the more my game could open up. And uh, I was able to do you know a little bit of that last year and use my pump fake. But you know when you're really a knockdown shooter, dead eye shooter, people fly by and you don't even have to raise the ball above your eyes. So um, you know I really worked hard on that. You have a new coach in Byron Scott. What's that been like? You know, it's an exciting. It's a fresh start, and um, you know, it's everybody. I think is, is pretty ready to go, and uh, I know he certainly is. And he's he's been telling us how excited he is to coach us, and uh, you know, we're we're very happy to have him. It's very. I'm probably gonna watch more film than usual. Uh, I'm not a big film guy in camp, uh, but I think this year we'll watch more than usual from last year's season, uh, and. You know, individually, I tend to talk to guys all year, So, uh, but I'll start it in camp. But we all took it hard, you know. Uh, we, we lost as a team, you know what I mean? And so uh, I think uh, the way we lost last year, at least from ourselves, uh, I don't think anyone, uh, that didn't sit well with anybody. And I think that's a good thing. Doc, you've made some additions to your coaching staff. Can you just talk about what went into that decision-making process for well, that? Well, what really went in is my coaching staff got raided by the NBA. And so <laughs> I lost some really good guys. Uh, and, you know, with Alvin and Ty leaving, uh, I moved Kevin. You know, Kevin has a big window now. He gets to look down on us, uh, Eastman. So that's really my entire staff. Uh, but. Uh, the staff that I, I'm bringing back this year is really a, really a great staff. I mean, Mike Woodson and Lawrence Frank and Sam Cassell, um, you know, I've had a relationship with all of them. I've known them. I mean, Lawrence and I coached together in Boston. Uh, I've known Woody forever. I get to beat him a lot in golf, so I've known him forever. And, uh, you know, Sam I actually coached uh, in Boston. We won a title together. Uh, so I think it's a really good staff. And, you know, a little different than the staff last year, uh, but same principles overall. I think we're excited about that. You know, uh, obviously it's been a been a long summer. A lot of interesting things happened, and we're excited to be, you know, moving forward and excited about starting camp tomorrow. I think so. I feel like last season was one of the better teams that I've been on in, in my NBA career. And I'm sure these guys will say the same and that we watched a lot of film during the summer. It was uh, motivation during workouts and things like that. But uh, with that being said, you know, it's in the past. Obviously, we can learn from what happened last season, but it's all about moving forward. I'm oh, doing, doing things. You know, I'm not always the guy that's going to be talking a lot in the huddles. Um, but um, every game, I want to be the guy that guys can depend on down the stretch um, and depend on to, to, to work hard, um, take care of myself and do the things that I need to do. And um, I think it's important for leaders not to, to step outside of their um, step outside of what, what they do and what they do well. You know, you can you can lead it in, in your own way and, and you just have to be comfortable with it because at the end of the day it's not um, I think that we've always been close. It doesn't take a situation for us as players and teammates to come closer if something controversial happens. Um, we were as tight as we were today three years ago. Um, so we're looking to just improve this year and move forward and um, be a championship basketball club. Last year was a personally for me a tough season to be hurt in the summer, hurt training camp, hurt the whole half of the season and then you know kind of finally catch my group after all-star break. So I just sat back and took some time off and just refocused and rededicated myself to basketball as far as my body. Um, you know, I lost 20 pounds this summer, started eating right, yoga, everything I could possibly do to prevent all the stuff that happened last year. So, uh, you know, right now I weigh 210 pounds. I weighed 210 pounds since I was like 10th grade or 11th grade. You know, I, <laughs> I had that for a couple weeks. Uh, when I got back to Austin, uh, around June 6th, um, I think it was on a Friday, and I just treated that next Monday as going back to work. And my focus for that first six to eight weeks in Austin was uh, getting my body back in shape and regaining the strength in my leg. Um, so 
I'm over it. I'm focused on this year. Uh, let's rock and roll now. It was really cool to watch, you know, everybody from your organization basically come up there and support you, you know, and they even talked up there and they had, it really was cool because people don't get a chance to see a Matt Barnes or Blake or Chris or DJ, you know, just family members from other places, these guys up close, they see them on TV and to see them relax and just chill out and be normal people, I think was really, really cool. And it, I haven't been on a team like this before where everybody's close knit and everybody's talking about each other in the group text. Well, there's never a dull moment in LA basketball, that is for sure. All right, that will do it for today's show. Thanks so much for joining us. And you are going to want to join us on our next show when it's more postseason baseball. In fact, we have a very special story about two men that will take them all the way back to the 1965 World Series. I'm Maria Soraya, and we'll see you next time.